Welcome to Caring for You, Mind, Body, and Soul. This is Lesson 2, Caring for Your Mind, Guilt, and Fear. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay. So, we have about 15 minutes left. Uh, is there anything else that anyone would like to talk about? Does anyone ever feel guilty about doing something without the person? So... Layla was at respite, and I wanted to go to the store. Now, I could have just picked her up and taken her to the store with me, but I wanted her not with me. I just want to look at what I want to look at and buy what I want to buy and take as long as I want to take, but she wants to look at everything. Mm -hmm. Is it crazy that I want to do stuff without her and I feel guilty about it? No, 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 not at all. I never go anywhere without him. My mother does not trust anyone else to be with my abuelo. Steph, I completely understand. Okay, can you can you tell us a little more about that, Linda? Sure. Caregivers report experiencing a range of emotions related to their caregiving roles. Two of the most common emotions they report are guilt and fear. It is normal to have all of these emotions. What is important is identifying them when they're happening and finding ways to cope with them or expressing them in constructive ways. This is how guilt and fear can show up in the lives of caregivers. Guilt and fear might keep caregivers from getting help they need. Guilt and fear sometimes cause caregivers to get angry at themselves, the person they're caring for, and maybe even people around them who are also helping to care for the person. Guilt and fear can work against caregivers by causing them to lose confidence in their caregiving abilities, to feel that they're not in control, or to feel hopeless. Guilt and fear can keep caregivers from seeing all the good things they're doing by causing them to only focus on what they could be doing better or what they think they're doing wrong. It can also cause them to not want to try to do things differently or learn from their mistakes. This is what guilt and fear looked like for Linda and ways she coped with these emotions. Linda cares for Ed, her husband who lives with younger onset Alzheimer's. Hi, Ed. Why aren't you eating? Oh, remember? I'm going out to lunch today. Why? I haven't seen my friend Sandy in a while. She could come here. Ed, I haven't been anywhere without you since, you know, forever. So you don't like me anymore? Ed, I'm not saying that. What are you saying? I'm saying that I'm just going out to lunch with my friend, Sandy. I don't care. Fine. Who's that? It's probably Susan. You're leaving me. I'm not leaving you, Ed. I'm just going out for a few hours. Hi, Ed. So good to see you. She's going on a date. Oh. I am no good. I can't go to lunch. Ed, please don't do this. You are mean. Ed, I'm just going to lunch. Please. Ed, I brought a new puzzle. You go. We don't need you. Go! Well, that sounded, that sounded tough for all of you. <laughs> Needless to say, I didn't have a very fun lunch. <laughs> all I did was complain about Ed and my situation when I really just needed to get away for once. Have you ever tried again? Yeah. I've put into practice some of the things that we've been doing in here. Thanks. It works. Good. Good. 
Why aren't you eating? I am. But I brought some leftovers and I know you don't like my leftovers. <laughs> so that is why I made you ham and Swiss. Thank you. Why are you here? Well, Linda and I were talking and I asked if I could bring my new puzzle over for you to help me with. Oh, I'm good with puzzles. I know. <laughs> and I volunteered to get out of your hair for a little while. Good idea. I also have a treat for you. I like you. <laughs> I like you too. It is important to recognize that many, if not all, caregivers experience guilt and fear throughout their caregiving journey, although they might look different for each person. Linda felt guilty leaving Ed and was fearful that he was upset, even that he would yell at Susan while she was gone and worried that Susan would never come back to help out. Going back to foundations of person-centered caregiving will help you cope with guilt and fear. Seek knowledge by learning approaches and skills to help the person with dementia as well as help yourself. Learn your own signs of guilt and fear and what helps you cope with these emotions. Remind yourself that you are doing the best you can in this moment and practice humility in trying to find new ways to do things. In the video, Linda tried a new way to say goodbye to Ed when she went to lunch, and this helped her to feel less guilty about leaving him. She learned that it upset Ed when she focused on her leaving, and it was better to put less focus on her leaving. Adapt to the new reality by recognizing both your needs as well as the needs of the person with dementia. In the video, Linda needed a break, and Ed needed to feel secure and engaged when Linda left. Linda worked with Susan to find something that Ed really enjoyed, so he was less focused on her leaving and actually looking forward to having his favorite soda and working on his puzzle with Susan. Finding a better way to say goodbye that worked for both of them was also building trust between them that each of their needs were being met. Be honest with yourself by accepting that you cannot do it all, focusing on what you can do rather than what you aren't doing. In the video, rather than focusing on what Linda was doing wrong by leaving him, she focused on finding a way to leave Ed in a way that was positive for both of them. Guilt and fear are real. It's okay to be honest with yourself when you feel this way. Person-centered caregiving can help you better cope with guilt and fear and care for you so that you can care for the person with dementia. Congratulations on completing lesson two and doing a good thing for yourself. As you look for opportunities to apply what you've learned, consider trying one of these micro steps. Learn my own signs of guilt and fear. Adapt to the new reality by trying new ways of doing things. Try to focus on what I can do to cope with my guilt and fear rather than focusing on what I can't do or what I'm doing wrong. Consider both my needs as well as the needs of the person with dementia. Or come up with your own micro step. Each step moves you forward to caring for you.